Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I'm Brad Bridges, and I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite drummers ever. Uh, some of you may know that I am, in fact, a drummer. Uh, I have been a drummer for a very long time, and uh, obviously, you know, the world of percussion is a big part of my life. Uh, so naturally, I've, I've come to appreciate lots of, lots of different drummers. So uh, I thought it would be interesting to uh, put this list together and put it on my channel. Um, just an, as a quick disclaimer, I should say right off the bat that, uh, you know, I'm not saying that this is a, in any way a definitive list. I'm not saying that, yes, you know, so-and-so is the best drummer ever and no one can touch him. That's not what I'm saying at all. These are just drummers that uh, have always appealed to my taste and drummers that have been very influential to me as well, you know, as a musician. And, you know, and, and, you know the, the world of drumming is what led me towards all of, you know, the progressive rock stuff that I love so well and that I've been talking about uh, on this channel. Uh, but I should say that it's kind of a different world, you know, my, my record collecting and, you know, you know album nerdery uh, world is very different from my music world, you know, and I'm, I'm in album mode and I'm researching albums and listening to albums and, you know, I, I'm a, enveloped by the history and the intrigue of it all. Whereas, you know, my musicianly life is very much more focused on, you know, music in the moment and rudiments and, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's more to do with the mechanics of a piece of music that I'm working on rather than, you know, an artifact of music, i.e. an album. Um, so anyway, without any further ado, I will, I will mention my favorite drummers and, uh, don't be upset, but there's, uh, you know, it's just a matter of taste, right? But I've got, there's really no metal drummers on this, on this list. I thought there would be at least one metal drummer, but um, when I was crunching it all down, it, there, there isn't one guy on here that I would say is a metal guy. So, um, you know, if, if you're expecting Chris Adler, Mike Portnoy, or even Neil Peart, he's not, he's not a metal guy, but Neil Peart didn't make my list. Uh, sorry about that, everybody, but uh, that's, that's, that's just how it goes. When I went down to, t to 10 drummers, uh, that's how it was. So anyway, coming in at number 10, is Joe Morello. Uh, now, of course, Joe Morello performed with Dave Brubeck in the Dave Brubeck Quartet, and uh, he was very much, he was a, a jazz drummer of the absolute highest caliber for me. Um, he, he has a tech, he had a technique and a swing that is just unsurpassed, and I can't, you know, watching him play, uh, it's, it, it never ceases to amaze me how loose the man is and how he's able to execute what he did. Very notable, of course, you know, with the Dave Rubeck Quartet, they were very known for playing in very odd time signatures, and they're a very eccentric uh, quartet for jazz. And, um, you know, Joel Morello's ability to navigate those odd time signatures and swing with those odd time signatures, I think, is nothing short of astounding. Um, so he's uh, definitely one of my favorites, for sure. Uh, we'll move on to number nine in my list, uh, Ian Pace. Deep Purple's drummer, a phenomenal drummer, and he was he had to have been my biggest idol when I was, you know, first growing up and first, you know, getting into drums. Obviously, I had my John Bonham phase, and I got through, you know, in, into Zeppelin and all that, but what really appeals to me with Ian Pace is, you know, his ability to rock and swing. Um, you know, when you think about it, in, in the 70s, Deep Purple were one of the heaviest hitting, you know, loudest, craziest bands out there. Uh, you know, they were definitely, you know, a hard rock, proto, early metal kind of a thing. And um, it's amazing that Ian Pace is able to drive that heavy, those heavy riffs and, you know, play so fast, but he still has a swing to it. He's got that big band sort of mentality. And uh, that's, that style has stuck with him, you know, all the way, you know, all the way through, you know, forever. Um, notable moments for, uh, for Ian Pace, I would say, it's got to be You Fool No One, um, on, uh, the Burn album, um, no, there, there, there's, there's so many moments, just watching the guy play is really, really cool. Uh, anyway, moving up to, uh, number eight, my eighth favorite drummer, at this moment, anyway, is Dennis Chambers. Uh, now, this is, this guy's much more known in the, you know, funk end of things, and, um, Again, it's a funny thing, you know, I've never had the same obsessive nature over the individual albums of that period. Uh, not to the same extent that I do with the progressive albums, but anything that I've seen Dennis, Dennis Chambers play is just nothing short of astounding, you know. He, is, he has got that funk groove down like no other, and I mean, he's got, he's, he's got an incredible way of doing, you know, lightning fast rudiments within, you know, a slower tempo groove, and he does it with just such precision. Um, you know, he, he is he is a monster drummer. Absolutely. Dennis Chambers is uh, phenomenal. 
Uh, moving up to number seven, uh, Chad Wackerman, who of course was Frank Zappa's longest standing drummer. Chad Wackerman is a, one of my favorites. Always, I've, I've always been a huge fan of his. Um, one of my favorite Zappa albums, actually, uh, is uh, Make a Jazz Noise Here, which features, you know, some utterly phenomenal performances by Chad Wackerman. He is playing, of, of course, you know, in sync with um, Ed Mann, who was Zappa's percussionist at the time. But, um, yeah, he's just, he's just got such a great groove, and he's got such a talent for, um, you know, keeping a steady groove amid, amidst a whole bunch of craziness. And he accents the craziness as well. Uh, the version of the black page on Make a Jazz Noise here is a great example of how well um, Chad Reckerman keeps that steady groove amidst all the madness of the melody and rhythm of the black page. So uh, that's why Chad Reckerman's in there. Uh, my sixth favorite drummer, uh, another Zappa drummer, Terry Bozio. He had to be on this list because, well, he was the first drummer to perform the Black Page. In fact, Frank Zappa wrote the Black Page specifically for Terry as a sort of ultimate challenge. And, uh, you yeah, know, his, his performance on that is nothing short of, you know, fantastic. Um, Bozio is also very well known for playing a very large drum set. Um, and it's, you know, I... In, in principle, at least in my own drumming, my own world of drumming, I like, you know, a small setup, a traditional five-piece kind of jazz kit. Uh, because having a small kit for me makes it, you know, forces me to be more creative rhythmically. Uh, but Terry Bozio is a guy that plays an absolutely massive drum set, but he uses it phenomenally. They're, it's all tuned. All He's got these just racks of toms completely surrounding him, and they're all tuned to specific notes, so he can play melodically and he's developed this wonderful sort of orchestral style that you know is in conjunction with you know his heavy rhythmic style and um, you know Terry Bozio what more can be said he's a he's a genius drummer phenomenal stuff um, his vocals uh, with Frank Zappa are pretty wonderful as well you know the Punky's Whips stuff and uh, Titties and Beer uh, really good stuff Terry Bozio is, uh, is a funny guy as well <laughs> So uh, we're at the top end of my favorite drummers now, the top end of the list. Coming in at number five is Phil Collins. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think Phil Collins is an absolutely fantastic drummer, and I think I, I um, you know, hinted at this in my Genesis videos. Collins, to me, will always be a drummer first and a, and a singer second. He kind of alludes to that in his book. And uh, obviously now you know, Collins is... is Touring again, you know, lightly. I'm not, is he? Is he touring right now or is it all finished? I can't remember. Um, obviously, you know, unfortunately, Phil cannot drum anymore uh, due to a um, health problem. But uh, the stuff that he, he was doing in the 70s, man, he's, he was just a, a lights-out drummer. Uh, you know, obviously on albums like uh, Standing England by the Pound is a great example of his drumming. But uh, the really, you know, the really good Phil Collins drum stuff comes from Brand X, I think. Uh, and his performances on, uh, on the album Unorthodox Behavior are just, it's nothing short of phenomenal and hugely influential on my playing. Um, you know, if, if I think, if there's, if there's any one style that I've probably ended up nicking a little bit, um, you know, stealing, I mean, is, it might be Phil Collins. I think if, if any, anything that I've recorded or anything that I've, you know, I've, I've, I've seen myself play, I always say, oh shit, that sounds like Phil Collins. I, I'm stealing that. <laughs> Which, uh, eh, well, whatever. But yeah, he's a, he's a, tr he's a tremendous drummer. And I, think, I think it's sad that uh, he's not as well known as a drummer. I mean, obviously everyone thinks Phil Collins the pop star, but no, he's a drummer first, man. He, and he is a, a really, really, really good drummer. Moving up to number four, we got a King Crimson guy. Everyone knew that it was going to happen at some point. Gavin Harrison. I know all the drummers that have been in King Crimson are phenomenally talented, you know, Pat Mastelotto, you know, Michael Giles, right, right, right the way, you know, straight to the back, uh, to, to the, the, the early days. Uh, and Bill Reiflin has been playing with Crimson now for a little bit. And uh, you know, they're, they're, Crimson has a long-standing history of very, very good drummers. Um, but Gavin Harrison, to me, he is, he, he is the guy, man. Um, I remember when I was in high school and I, was, I, I first discovered Porcupine Tree. I've kind of gotten out of Porcupine Tree a little bit latterly. Uh, but uh, it was it was all about the drumming for me. The drumming on on, on albums like um, Fear of a Blank Planet uh, is is just oh that really blew my mind. And the way that the way that Gavin can um, you know he, the way he throws his fills in there they're almost seamless with the groove, and uh, he's just he's he's a phenomenally talented drummer. 
some of the live stuff that Gavin has done on the the Crimson releases, uh, you know, he, he 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 Gavin does get the big drum solo at the end of 21st Century Schizoid Man with uh, the current Crimson lineup, and it's just scary. He's got uh, he's got that famous thing with the really really fast double bass drum thing. <laughs> He's nuts. Gavin Harrison is, is just phenomenal. I saw him twice with King Crimson, and uh, both times the drum solo at the end was just hair-raising. And the way that that's placed, I'm not doing a King Crimson review now or anything, but the way the way that Gavin Harrison's drum solo is placed in the middle of the bridge of Schizoid Man is so perfect, and it's so brilliant because it makes you pay attention to the drum solo, and you realize what a phenomenally talented guy he is. Uh, we've made it up to my top three now of this redundant list that would probably be different, you know, in two years from now or maybe even a month from now. I'd change my mind. But right now, uh, number three is Steve Gadd. Nobody can deny Steve Gadd. Uh, I believe he is the most recorded drummer ever. I think uh, he does hold that title. He has played on more albums than anybody else. And uh, there's a reason why he is in such demand. I mean, nobody has a groove like Steve Gadd. Um, you know, he's, a, he's, he's, not like a, he's not like a Mike Portnoy or a Neil Peart where it's all just technicality and, you know, flash and razzmatazz and, you know, craziness. It's just, it's the way it sounds when Gad is behind a kit. You know, Gad can just play the, the straight up four on the floor beat and it sounds unlike anything. It just sounds unlike anyone else playing a four on the floor beat. There's just some magic touch that he has with those sticks and those drum heads. And uh, it's, it's nothing short of astounding. He's still immensely talented on a technical level. And some of his licks, you know, the way that he executes those fills, I mean, there's, a, there's an immense challenge in, you know, A, learning the rudiments to, you know, be able to play those licks. But, you know, the next level is making it sound like the way he does it and, the way, and, the, and getting that flow and, and that, um, uh, you know, he is just a groove messenger, uh, Steve Gadd. You know, always he's always been one of my favorites and certainly one of my biggest inspirations as a musician. Moving up to number two, Bill Bruford. I was talking about King Crimson drummers. I, I think I failed to mention Bruford because I knew he was coming up as number two on my list. So, uh, yeah, the, for, Bill Bruford has got to be on there because of his sheer creative voice on the instrument. There's no, there's no other drummer out there that quite... Um, that was quite as exploratory as Bill Bruford. Um, obviously, you know, he started out in the rock world, uh, you know, playing with bands like Yes. He, he's, he's said famously that, you know, in those early days, Bruford was always a little too rock for the jazz guys and a little too jazz for the rock guys. You know, he, he, treaded, he was treading this sort of, you know, musical territory somewhere between the two styles. It's kind of a, you know, in today's day and age, it's kind of a redundant analogy, but it makes sense if you're looking at the context of the late 60s. Um, and, uh, you know, famously, he left Yes after Close to the Edge and joined King Crimson. And, you know, the, the drumming that he does in, you know, that period, 73, 74, King Crimson, is just, you know, scary, scary stuff. Especially when you consider that, you know, that period of King Crimson was founded so heavily on improvisation. And, I mean, he was coming up with this stuff on the spot. I mean, that's what King Crimson, he says King Crimson does that. You know, it forces you to find a new way of doing things. And, um, you know, Bruford, you know, to me, while he may not have the same technical capacity as Gavin Harrison, he's still higher on my list just because of his sheer, you know, willingness to, you know, go forward and find a new voice for the musical instrument. Um, and of course, you know, towards, you know, the latter half of his career, he became much more enveloped in jazz. And uh, he led a phenomenal band called Earthworks. Uh, the first period of Earth Earthworks was... Uh, electronic drums meets jazz and it's some wonderful stuff i absolutely love the early earthwork stuff the first two albums are great and uh then after his third time with king crimson he, he did do an acoustic earthworks uh where he did famously have his uh his timpani style drum set uh where he has the hi-hat right out front remote hi-hat uh snare and then his um, snare in the middle with all toms laid out flat on a, an even playing field, uh, much like a timpani set. So it's a perfectly symmetrical drum kit, and he played that right until the end of his performing career. Uh, of course, Bill Bruford is retired now, um, and that's okay. But I'm really sad that I never got to see Earthworks live. I did see I did see a Bill Bruford drum clinic when I was like, oh god, 18 or 19, something like that, and uh, it 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 did change my musical life. Uh, he gave me lots of good ideas, which I still uh, carry forward today. But I'm still a little sad that I never got to see Bill Bruford perform, you know, 
in a gig, at a gig. But, uh, oh well, that's life, isn't it? Anyway, we get to number one. Are you ready? Can anyone take a guess? Does anyone have any ideas what my number one might be? Well, it's too late now, because my favorite drummer is Vinnie Kaliuta. He's another one of those undeniable guys. Um, you know, it's a funny thing because, you know, Bill Bruford is off, he plays in bands that I've had that obsessive nature and I, I, I end up, you know, getting all of the releases, all the live albums, all everything, and I study everything. Vinnie Kalita, I don't, you know, because he's, you know, he's played with everybody, I've, I've never really gone through and collected each and every, you know, release that he's been a part of, but any time I've ever seen Vinnie Kalita do anything, it is just absolutely ridiculous. He is a scary drummer, man. Um, I first discovered Kaliuta, of course, through Frank Zappa. Um, he is on, I think he's on Parts of Joe's Garage, and he, uh, he is on the uh, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar album. And, uh, you know, Frank Zappa's introduction on some of those records is, is uh, you know, perfect, uh, perfect description of what he is uh, on drums, vitamin pills, and rhythmic encyclopedia of any Kaliuta. Uh, he is a rhythmic encyclopedia. I mean, and, and the way that the way that he is able to um, navigate the polyrhythmic figures that he does. I mean, he plays a great contrast to the rhythmic, uh, you know, the rhythmic center of whatever a piece, whatever piece of music he's playing on. And you know, his drums are in effect become the lead instrument because he's using the rhythms of the song for his own purposes to exploit his own, you know, uh, you know, sort of tension and release within the comp tension and release within the con context of the composition. That was a, w a mouthful. But uh, anything I've seen Vinny call you to play, I mean, any video, it just, it absolutely frightens me. Uh, he is just a terrifying player for sure. Um, and yeah, so that, that's, that, that's my, that's my top ten list of uh, favorite drummers. Um, it's, it's a silly thing listing these, all these, you know, top ten whatever. Uh, and I've said in other videos that I am strictly against that, but just for the sake of, you know, doing some YouTube. Uh, there's my favorite drummers. There's all kinds of other guys that are that are very worthy of note. Um, particularly the guy that has that band called Nerve. His, na his name escapes me right now, but he is a frightening drummer. Um, he does sort of electronic music, but actually plays all those rhythms. So uh, he's a monster. Um, obviously, you know, Neil Peart and Mike Portnoy are honorary mentions. They should be mentioned, but they didn't make it to my top ten. I didn't want to be one of those guys. And truth be told, you know, everyone that I mentioned on my list has had a far greater impact on my own drumming um, than Neil Peart or Mike Portnoy. So uh, sorry about that, everybody. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my near incoherent ramblings. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, and subs subs subscribe. And um, until the next video, you will see me in the future.